I made a video game. It didn't go well. In fact, there was quite a lot of failure involved. Thankfully, all of my failure leads to progress. Let's talk game design. Before we start, I have to tell you that the game you're looking at now is not entirely the game that I submitted. Mechanically it is, it's all the same, but there's a lot of unsavoury bits to it that I don't think YouTube would appreciate. So I've done the only reasonable thing and turned all the blood green. That should cover that. This last weekend, Jonas Tyrola, who you might know from his life, held the third annual Wowie Game Jam. For those of you that don't know, a game jam is a timed event around a set theme in which multiple people make a game and then rate each other's entries. What I like about Jonas's is his game jams is that he always focuses on something that's a little bit more abstract for his theme. Last year, he had a theme that encouraged intentional bugs, for example, and this year's theme was no exception. Failure is progress. Subtitle, let's mess with the concept of winning and losing. If you've seen any of my previous videos before, you might be familiar with a concept known as a fail state. Contrary to popular belief, this is not Ohio. It is instead the state in which you have failed. Something like a death pit, or some spikes, or an enemy killing you, or some spikes. They're generally seen as a requirement for most traditional game types, so playing around with the concept of failure is an intriguing prospect for game design that invites a lot of deep thought, experimentation, and hours of hard work. Which is not what I did. Regular viewers to the channel will know that I'm currently in a bit of a burnout state, where creatively I'm running on fumes. My way out of this state is to just keep producing things, albeit on a much smaller scale than I might have been before. But I wasn't about to let that stop me from pushing some boundaries and improving myself as a person. Regular viewers will also know that my artistic ability is somewhere between none and zero, and I tend to fall back on easy to produce assets like glowy geometric shapes and well that's it really. So for this jam I set myself a personal challenge. I was going to use pixel art and I was going to make it all myself and I was going to actually try. What you're witnessing is the result. Is it any good? Well, let's open the floor to you, the public. Hello darkness, my old friend. No, you don't understand. I really tried this time. I mean, I really tried. In all seriousness though, I like how it looks. I haven't ever actually tried to do proper art before, and I think that this as a starting point isn't entirely awful. I will absolutely take not entirely awful as a win, one day hoping to work my way up to it's alright. But we're not done there, oh no. If you've kept an eye on the channel's output, you might have noticed that I've put out a couple of shorts about old mobile games. I did this because a YouTuber told me it breaks the algorithm and I wasn't creating enough community polls. No I didn't. I did this because they're relatively quick ways of getting some regular content out while I'm getting over this little burnout phase I found myself in. And I find them to be genuinely interesting ways of having a quick look at some topics that don't necessarily deserve a full video. And of course they break the algorithm. Anyway, maybe it's all this recent focus on old mobile games of the past, but I wanted to make a game that could be played in portrait mode on mobile with a touch interface. I'd never done this with Construct 3 before so I thought this was as good a time as any. And so with these two goals in mind I set about stitching together something quick and simple that would be satisfying to play around with. Thus, BL's Advance. I most likely don't need to go into too much detail about the design here because I think you're all very intelligent people, in addition to being very good looking and fun to be around. Please like and subscribe. But we'll cover some of the basics. Although I made direct reference to the theme in the game's audio, and more on that later. I was more interested in the subtitle, let's mess with the concept of winning and losing. This isn't a game you can win, and it's also not a game that you can lose. It just ends when you want it to end. You could theoretically play forever, and I'd be interested to see if anyone bothers to play for an obscene amount of time. If you do, let me know. There's not much incentive to play on for very long, because I didn't have a lot of time to work on the game overall. This might come as a shock to you, but putting actual effort into your graphical assets takes a lot longer than drawing a square and using a glow effect. Who knew? Still, what I've achieved is something I would best describe as disposable gameplay. This sounds like a negative criticism, but it shouldn't be. Disposable gameplay was largely present in Flash games from back in the day, and suggests a game that's designed to only be played for a short amount of time, usually only once, and then discarded like an empty sugar packet. They're brief, simple and satisfying, and I think that's something I've managed to achieve here. There's something inherently satisfying about bouncing a physics object on some bullets, and the later addition of some blood-soaked saw blades for our unfortunate victim to get stuck on just adds to the unpredictable nature of the gameplay. Now certainly it's slightly buggy, and occasionally the man's limbs can vanish, or he can find himself embedded in the walls, but that's why the game has a reset button. It's fine. So I'd drawn all the art from scratch, and managed to make a playable, mobile-focused game. There was one last thing I had to do, which has become a bit of a signature of my Game Jam entries over the years. Hello, 
I am Satan. That's a good opening line, isn't it? Yes, true to form, I decided to add some audio narration over the top to give the whole game some context. I also included a bit of humour, because I'm hilarious, and a contextualised tutorial for the game. I did this all while the player will be messing around with the gameplay, because, teachable moment, player discovery is better than outright instruction. Something that the player can figure out for themselves will always be more satisfying than you telling them what to do. So having the tutorial instructions delayed by about a minute lets the player work out most of the very simple mechanics by themselves, but also make sure that eventually, after not a very long time, they'll know exactly what they're meant to be doing just in case they're stuck. By adding in some jokes, it also adds to the overall entertainment value, so the tutorial element doesn't seem quite so instructive and obtrusive to the game they're playing. The narration is very much within my comfort zone, and something I have no problem busting out in about half an hour, which when you've only got about an hour left to submit the game overall, is a good thing. It's not pushing myself, it's not improving my abilities, but given that I'd worked so much on the art and a format that I'd never really done before, I think I'd done about enough of that already. If I was going to take this game further, I think it's pretty obvious what it'd need. More. More options to spend your blood on, more hazards that appear over time, more skins for the player character, more guns, more hilarious narration, more stages, just more. In the end, the game is alright. It's nothing groundbreaking, but I managed to achieve a couple of things I've wanted to do for a while, and I still managed to get something out that I think people can enjoy. For now, that'll have to do. I might have failed to make something innovative and legendary and good, but hey, failure is progress. You can play the game in the link in the description and I'd love your feedback on it. If you've liked this video, be sure to leave a like to make sure you like the video you liked, and subscribe for more videos like the liked one you liked when you liked it. I'll see you the next time I'm thinking, hey, let's talk game design.